Okay, so let's see how these properties of the dot product allow us to take this algebraic formula, this one here, and we'll work in two dimensions just to cut down on clutter. The argument will be exactly the same in three dimensions. Uh, the only thing you've got to be a bit careful about in three dimensions is what do you mean by, by the angle, right? Well, if I have two vectors in three dimensions, um, they will have a plane in common. Any two vectors lie in a plane, that's something that probably comes up for discussion in a linear algebra class, and we'll see that also um, pretty soon when we move on to talking about lines in planes. Two vectors determine a plane. Um, so if you have two vectors lying in a plane, which is not necessarily the xy plane, uh, you can still measure the angle between them. That still makes sense. And so this result is valid in two or three dimensions. Uh, but we'll do it in two dimensions just because it's a bit simpler there. Okay. So how do we, how do we make this work? Well, um, we take the law of cosines, which I did get right. I went and checked. And we apply it to the triangle here. Right? Um, so c squared. Well, C is the magnitude of u minus v. So that has to be equal to a squared, but a is the magnitude of u. Um, B is the magnitude of v, also squared. And then we have 2 times the magnitude of u times the magnitude of v times cosine of this angle. Okay, um, so the first property that we're going to rely on is this fifth property here. So u minus v, right, we're squaring it, but when we, the magnitude squared, what that really means is this really means u minus v dotted with u minus v. Okay, and Leave this side the same for now. Um, the main thing, we, we need to work out this left-hand side here. Now, um, because we have this distributive property and because order doesn't matter, right, I'm going to kind of maybe do this on this side. So when I do u minus v dotted with u minus v, right, uh, I can use that uh, property number 2 to write that as u minus v dot u, and then u minus v dotted with minus v. Right? Um, then I can change the order up. I can write that as u dotted with u minus v, and then minus v dotted with u minus v. And again, I'm using uh, the first property there. And now I can use the second property again, u dotted with u, and then u dotted with minus v, okay? And then minus v dotted with u, and then minus v dotted with minus v. Okay, good. Um, well, u dot u by property 5, that's the magnitude of u squared. Um, property three, right, um, minus v really means minus one times v. And so I can bring that minus one out front and write minus u dot v. Oh, but um, v dot u is also u dot v. That's property one. Um, and there's, there's two of them. So actually, I can put a two in there. And then uh, that minus sign I can also pull out. Minus times minus gives me a plus. And so I get the magnitude of v squared. Okay, so now we plug all that in. Magnitude of u squared minus 2u dot v plus the magnitude of v squared. And that's going to be equal to magnitude of u squared plus the magnitude of v squared minus 2 magnitude of u times the magnitude of v times cos theta. And now I bet you can 
already see it. Um, there's a magnitude of u squared on either side. You can cancel those. Same thing with the magnitude of v. And um, that leaves us with this term and this term. And of course, those minus twos, we can divide by both sides by minus two. Get rid of that. Get rid of that. And there's your result, right? So through these kind of purely algebraic properties and, and one trigonometry fact that we may have forgotten from high school, uh, we're able to pass from the algebra over here to a, a very geometric fact, right? Telling us this relationship between the dot product on the one hand and magnitudes and angles on the other.